Good morning. It's Monday, July 27th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Taking the Measure of Wisdom, and our scripture is James chapter 3. If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you're bitterly jealous and there's selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. Trying to define or measure something like wisdom is much like the tale of three blind men who were describing an elephant. Their eyes were, of course, their hands. One of the men stood at the front of the elephant, feeling the trunk, and he exclaimed, It's like a tree, round and reaching upwards. The second man stood at the side of the elephant with his hands exploring the animal's ribcage. He said, What do you mean, tree? This beast is a wall. The third man stood at the rear side holding the elephant's tail. He concluded, well, whatever this is, it's tied up with a rope. Three men seeing the same animal and giving three different opinions and all three of them right. Sounds like a board meeting at church, doesn't it? I used to have a somewhat different opinion than I do now of wisdom. I used to think wisdom was common sense that made sense. It was like Ossie and Bobby McDuffie. One was highly educated, the other barely so. But when either spoke, their common sense just seemed to cut through any difficult situation and set a standard you could count on. I still think they were among the most clear-headed and godly men I ever met. But my understanding of how you define true wisdom, and especially the godly sort, has matured past that point. It's like the three men describing an elephant. Their analysis of what they'd felt was correct. It just wasn't complete. James, the half-brother to Jesus, gives us a more complete, no-nonsense description of true or godly wisdom. The measure of true wisdom is not taken by merely looking at a person's words. Rather, it's the person's actions. If you want to measure whether someone is wise, check their life. Check the way others are treated. Do their actions match up with their words? Is there a sense of honor that a person would never lie to you? James warns that evil and disorder is to be found in selfish ambition, boasting, and lying. It's the polar opposite of honor, which lives in truth-telling. There are times I am tempted to lie. I have to confess I don't like being in situations where I have to tell somebody a hard truth. And if there's a lie, small, white, somewhat harmless, that would make the uncomfortable moment fade away with nobody getting shamed or angry, the temptation causes me some real internal conflict. It's a genuine temptation because my desire to not hurt another person is pressing my mind to search for a way out of the possibility of causing harm. But the honorable, wise person recognizes where that suggestion comes from because it smells like smoke. It's right out of the pit of hell. It eases into the back of your mind with a smoothness that got Eve's attention in the garden. If a person is a practiced, skilled liar, there comes a time when lying becomes, for them, the only truth they know. They go past the point of even being able to recognize truth. But the opposite is also true. The person who lives in truth, being honorable, always speaks truth because nothing less will let them sleep. I served as pastor at a church once that was falling apart. A power struggle had erupted into a full-on congregational split. The music director had moral issues and had to be fired, and we were in dire need of a music program. News like that gets around, and one Sunday a couple showed up at church. After worship, the man asked if I'd come to visit them. They were interested in becoming part of the church. When I visited with them the next night, he and his wife showed me into their den. On the wall, there were at least ten certificates, all extolling the merits of the man's musical talent. 
He elaborated on each one, boasting how he'd taken terrible music programs and brought his gift of music to each one. Then he got to the agenda. He and his wife had just left another church that, in his opinion, had no spirit at all. He had taken six other families with him. They were just waiting to find out where he was going so they could follow him. He then laid out the offer. He said, if you'll make me your new music director, you'll get those other six families too. I just have to give them the word. Frankly, any definition of honorable or wise does not include that. Let's pray together. Father, we would be wise. Help us to know it's always found in truth. For you today, the next time temptation to bend, twist, or reinvent the truth comes along, don't. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road.